An infection of the brain can kill you within a, a, about a year. What you need is therefore an un, excellent antibiotic passed into your body in the best way, in the way that w which will reach the brain. The best method of getting an antibiotic into you is to have an intravenous line inserted into a vein in your arm. This is then connected to a plastic bag that delivers the antibiotic by gravity from the bag through the line and into the vein entering the heart. Veins carry blood to the heart. The blood and the antibiotic are then pumped into your lungs to get some oxygen into the mixture. The blood, antibiotic and oxygen then continue through your body into the various organs. The antibiotic can be fed in at any interval by opening a valve at the wrist where the line ends, thus ensuring an even supply of antibiotic. You do, go, you do not get too much at some times, not enough at other times, as with tablets. In this way you avoid taking pills, which may sound easier, but it's not easy as far as the body is concerned. With a tablet, the antibiotic has to be digested and then passed through the wall of the stomach as though it were food. This is a very indirect way of getting antibiotics into your system. Much of the antibiotic is treated as waste by the stomach and is passed out in the urine or feces. An antibiotic is treated as a chemical poison by the stomach and if you take it on an empty stomach it may cause pain. If you take it with food or water, that is easier on the stomach, but much of the antibiotic may be passed through with the food waste. However, supplying antibiotics by the intravenous method is expensive. You need a doctor to insert the line. You need a nurse, at least at first, to fill the bag and open the valve to let the antibiotic in. You must not let the end of the line get dirty. The line must be cleaned out at intervals. But all this is worth it if you can afford it, or if you live in Germany, where they know how to treat Lyme disease and where treatment is free. You can use ceftriaxone or cefotaxime or penicillin G. Some combine this with other oral antibiotics. The theory behind this is that the Lyme bacteria can form balls instead of spirals. Balls, called cysts, are more resistant to certain antibiotics and therefore other biotics are taken to kill these variants. There are also bacteria forms without cell walls which also need a different antibiotic. A further difficulty is that Lyme bacteria can hide in places which do not need much blood and they can there not be reached by the antibiotic in the blood. You need one gram twice a day if you take ceftriaxone, which is sold under the trade name of, of rosafine. Side effects are small compared with the risk of death that is facing you. It is no time for your doctor to start messing around with small doses of talking about the risk of bacterial resistance. Bacterial resistance is caused by small doses taken in the third world where the bacteria learn to survive these doses and become resistant, say 3 grams of amoxicillin and no more for Lyme disease. Another source of resistance uh, is the tons of antibiotics routinely shoveled into cow feed even when the cattle are well to stop them getting infections. A few grams a day here for Lyme disease hardly is the cause of resistance. Lyme bacteria need ne next to no oxygen to live and you can't kill them by stopping their supply of oxygen. They can go almost into a sort of hibernation which makes it difficult to kill them all. They can change their outer, outer protein coating coating so that when the immune system attacks the first coat, the second coat has good def defences against the chemicals used by the immune system. The Lyme bacterium genetically is extremely sophisticated and designed for survival. 
If you can't get intravenous antibiotics, then injections are the next best thing. These two avoid the stomach. Once again, you need one gram twice a day of rosfan, for example. The last resort is pills taken orally. Amoxicillin is the best one, one gram twice a day. Many find that taking metronidazole, called flagal, to kill cysts helps. Others find azithromycin helps. Others find telithromycin is helpful, though very expensive. Once again, Germany is the only country where the state health service deals well with Lyme disease. This is because Germany has what is called a free health service in the sense that you are free to go to a specialist directly and need not be referred by a GP. Many health services have what is called a gatekeeper health service where you need a referral from a GP to get free gratis help from a specialist. The GP often blocks the way to Lyme specialists and therefore there are not many in, in the UK, Ireland, Scandinavia and France. As many health services are short of money, they use the gatekeeper system to stop people getting the care they need. Lyme care is expensive and the UK, Ireland, Scandinavia and France do all they can to stop patients getting proper treatment. Sweden is without doubt the worst country to live in if you have Lyme disease, although Lyme is very common. The UK is perhaps the next worst, say number 27 and number 26 and the EU top 20, top 27. Germany is number one and Spain is number two. You can always go to Spain if you cannot get free treatment in your home country. Pharmacists in Spain have the right to issue scripts for many antibiotics and medicines are cheaper there. It is thus possible to get help if you travel to Spain. As you probably don't know a doctor in Spain who knows about Lyme disease, you can always buy Rosafan and inject yourself. You are allowed to buy antibiotics in any EU country and to import one year's supply of these to your home country. This does not apply to narcotics, but narcotic medicines do not cure Lyme and you do not therefore need to import them to your own country. It will probably take you up to a year to cure yourself of stage 2 Lyme. The sooner you stop, the better.